Airplanes are very bold machines which are made up of millions of parts which must all work in perfect order to ensure the safe operation of these amazing machines. As a fun fact, the Boeing 747 is made up of 6 million parts. These highly complex units can withstand the harshest conditions thrown at them, from those thrown at by Mother Nature herself to those administered by us human beings in form of pilots and all the other people who deal with these jets. Airplane makers, whenever they make these planes, they must always prove that they can handle all the rigorous and harsh conditions they may be subjected to in the course of the operations with airlines. This is in order to ensure that they will be safe to fly and handle, even in the midst of all the various forms of abuse they may encounter. So, how are airplanes tested and certified before they can be allowed to fly people? Let's find out. Before airplanes can be mass produced, Airplane makers like Airbus and Boeing must first build prototypes or test airplanes. These prototypes are the ones which will be tested and all the data collected from what is called a test campaign program will be used to create all the manuals and procedures which will be used by all the future pilots who will fly these planes. Airplane test campaigns can last for months to even years. This is because any issues that may arise during a test phase may lengthen an airplane's test campaign program. For example, if a prototype gets damaged, it will take time to repair it. This will delay the certification test the prototype is assigned for and in turn lengthening the test program. Also, issues with the GE9X engines of the Boeing 7 x back in 2019 delayed the plane's first flight which in turn affected its test program and eventually delayed its introduction to service with airlines. The first 777X prototype successfully made its maiden flight on 25th January 2020 and is currently on its test campaign program as of this video. Its entry to service was postponed to late 2023, mainly because of the reduced demand for air travel which was brought by COVID-19. During a test campaign program, a number of different certification checks must be completed and in order to simplify this process, different prototype or test airplanes will be used and each prototype will be assigned its own specific checks. In most cases, four prototype airplanes are always used and if the test program has to be accelerated, more test planes will be added and depending on the load, up to eight test planes may be used. After the test campaign program is complete, two of these prototypes usually remain with the manufacturer and the others will be sold off to airlines but at a discounted price since the planes would be completely new by the time the certification campaign is completed. A good example of this pertains to the Boeing 777X test campaign program which is made up of four test airplanes from WH001 to WH004. As you can see, Two of the four test planes are painted in Boeing livery, while the other two are painted white. The reason as to why the last two planes are painted white is to indicate that they already belong to a customer, and that customer will be Lufthansa. Lufthansa will also be a launch customer of the Boeing 777X. A launch customer is usually an airline which begins operations with a new airplane type. Qatar Airways was the launch customer of the Airbus 350XWB, back in 2015 and as you can see one of these five airbus every 50 test planes has Qatar's name on it after the test campaign is complete the planes will be painted in lufthansa's livery and all the test equipment inside the planes will be removed later on seats and other amenities will be installed and the planes will later on be received by the airline the main reason as to why the manufacturers keep these prototypes is because a need might arise for them during the development process of the airplane. Technology is always advancing and these manufacturers may use this place to test out new cost-effective systems that may be installed on airplanes already built and in use by airlines. And that's the reason as to why original prototype airplanes always remain with the companies which built them. Having known the use of test plane airplanes and what a test campaign is, now let's look at some of the checks which are usually conducted on a test campaign program. These checks are very many and I'll begin with a very interesting test I came across with, which is called a velocity minimum unstick test. The velocity minimum unstick test is designed to figure out the lowest speed the freighter can take off. 
As Captain Mark Firestein, the chief test pilot for the 747-8 will tell you, it is a difficult maneuver to pull off. It's a balance between being forceful and being gentle. We want to be forceful to get the airplane's tail moving down towards the runway. But of course, we want to be very gentle when we set the airplane's tail down on the runway. Another important test is the rejected or abused takeoff test. Through months of flight testing, the airplane has shown plenty of power on takeoff. But how would it handle all that energy if it had to suddenly stop? At the start of the runway, Captain Vining begins the takeoff roll as usual, pushing all four engines to maximum thrust. But just as the airplane is going at over 200 miles or 320 kilometers per hour, he slams on the brakes to channel maximum energy to the carbon brakes. The pilot cannot use the thrust reversers. The whole intent is to demonstrate you, under worst conditions, you could safely stop the aircraft. The brakes, made by Goodrich, do exactly as they're supposed to. In fact, the 747-8 stops earlier than the team had hoped, beating the target by more than 700 feet or 200 meters. But stopping is just half the challenge. Now the airplane must prove it can withstand the tremendous heat that built up in the wheels, estimated to be more than 1,400 degrees Celsius. And it's a simple physics problem. We have to turn that kinetic energy into heat in the brakes. As expected, smoke pours out from the brakes as they glow a bright orange. Still, the firefighters who are standing by can't do anything but watch for the next five minutes. And that's to simulate that if you were at an airport, you had an RTO, you wouldn't necessarily have the fire department right there. So to demonstrate that the worst case would be five minute response time for a fire department to get to the airplane. By design, special fuse plugs in the tires are activated, deflating the tires before they explode. Finally, at the five-minute mark, firefighters move in with plenty of water. While the tires and brakes will have to be replaced, the rest of the airplane is perfectly fine. No sweat, even for the flight test engineers who were on board. We also have drainage or water checks, which are used to evaluate how the plane performs on wet runways. Water spray testing is one of the certification tests that we have to do to validate that any uh, water sprayed up by the nose gear or, or main gear will not have any negative effects on the engine performance or APU performance. We also have the ground effect checks, crosswind checks, cold soak checks, hot weather checks, engine out checks and noise checks, which are used to test how quiet an airplane is compared to other models of its family. Other checks include the stall and the flutter checks. And those are just a few of the hundreds of checks new airplanes do undergo during their test campaign programs. Upon the completion of a test campaign, an airplane will then be granted an operational trait certificate. A trait certificate signifies the airworthiness of a particular category aircraft according to its manufacturing design. The trait certificate usually clears an airplane for mass production and is normally granted by regulators like the American Federal Aviation Administration or FAA and the European regulators like the European Union Aviation Safety Agency or EASA. Can an airplane's trait certificate be withdrawn? Yes, it can. The two deadly crashes involving the Boeing 737 MAX revealed serious design flaws in the plane, which led to its trait certificate being withdrawn and the plane had to be grounded. The trait certificate was issued back after Boeing made design changes to the plane in order to make it safer, and different regulators and countries have started allowing the plane to fly once again. All in all, airplanes are very safe and capable vessels which have enabled air travel to become accessible and enjoyable for everyone. Thank you very much for watching this video and I do hope you have learned something new. In case you're new here, my name is Martin and welcome to the Skyland. Please subscribe for more great aviation content coming soon and otherwise thank you very much for your time and have a nice time ahead and please take care. Goodbye.